Good afternoon, everyone. Brent Budrow here with the Furrow. Today, I'm here with Roger Fry. Our topic of discussion is strip tillage. Um, hoping to get some feedback from you guys, questions, ideas. Maybe some of you are already doing strip tillage. Please like and subscribe if you like what you see today. So, Roger, um, talking about strip tillage, how many years have you guys been doing strip tillage? Um, I would say we're probably 2007, 2008. We okay. started at the trial, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, we were running this disc, disc ripper before, um, and had the opportunity to try a strip till trial, and we loved what we saw at that point in time, and have never turned back. Okay, okay. So around 2011 or so was when you officially switched over um, to strip tills. Would that be correct? Around somewhere around there. Yeah, it was probably 10 or 12 when we actually went full strip till. Okay. Um, and at that point, we decided that we could do a better job. There was better technology out there than having a custom. So tell us here about this machine that you're working with here today um, that we're, we're standing in front of. So this is a uh, Krauss strip till machine, and it's 16 row. Um, and basically what it does is, is we create a 10 inch wide strip um, that we will actually plant directly in um, in the spring. There will be no spring tillage. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to place our fertilizer in the placement where our seed is actually going to get the maximum use out of it. Okay. Uh, broadcasting, yes, it's there, but those roots have to go find it where we put it right where it doesn't even have to, to go find it. That's great. That's awesome. I, I think that uh, a lot of people are interested about um, strip tillage. What what does this unit here we're looking at uh, behind us, um, as far as what it, it's capable of doing and and uh, how it's I guess creating that strip? So it starts out with a cutter that runs within about an inch depth of our sh shank that follows. Uh, so basically, we have a cutter, we have row cleaners. We have a ripper shank with a point, and that point's probably three inches wide. Okay. Um, it, it, it lifts a lot of dirt. It'll lift it up, and then we have row, clear, row closers, which are wavy coulters, that basically create a berm. Okay. And that berm, we like to see about three to four inches high. Really? And the reason that we want that berm is, one, you're gonna get some settling. Mm -hmm. Two, um, it does help, you know, with a little bit of uh, runoff should there be a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. um, but the main main focus is is that settling, okay. because when we get to spring, we really want that berm to only be about half an inch higher than what your normal um, lay of the land is. Okay. And then that way it gives your planter a real nice smooth ride when we go to plant that strip. What about the end rows with strip tillage? Is it kind of rough on the end rows sometimes, or how do you manage that? Yep, it is. Um, you, you can create a berm there that uh, your planter is going to bounce over. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a lot of rain, a lot of settling, and now you've created an inversion mm -hmm. there. And now the planter wants to find the, the, the tires when you turn want to find that, and they want your, your wings bounce. Mm -hmm. So we do one of two things. Um, this machine has a uh, the capability that we can actually apply fertilizer with it out of the ground. Oh, wow. And so you can broadcast it on the end row and basically now you have a no-till environment. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't like that aspect of it, you can run the machine in the ground, create those berms. And so what we have done is we have come back with a vertical tillage tool and leveled that up. Okay. In, the spring, in the spring so nice. the only true tillage that we have is our end rows mm -hmm. and that's just to level up we're Great. not out there to do any significant tillage at all okay so having that sweet spot about four inches you mentioned for your um, fertilizer um, why four inches if um, you know you have that deep 10 inches deep why why do you like the four inch mark so when we run we, we started out and we ran it really deep mm -hmm. it took a lot of fuel, took a lot of horsepower, and we just didn't, 
wasn't part of the economics of what we were after, and so we shallowed it up to about eight inches. Mm -hmm. And eight inches has, has really shown it, it, it's efficient, it works well, it creates a really nice uh, strip. And we got to thinking, do we really want our fertilizer eight inches deep? And we decided we really don't want that. So mm -hmm. this machine allows us to um, shallow up that fertilizer tube okay. behind that ripper shank. So we run that, sh that tube about four inches deep. Okay. We feel like that when that seed gets to where it's really putting its roots down, it immediately gets into that nutrient. But with the mixing that goes on with that ripper shank, it basically moves that fertilizer in that profile of four to eight inches. Okay, okay, very good. You brought up a great point right there as far as the seed bed. How do you feel like that's changed since you switched to strip till now? <laughs> Uh, dramatically um, you can go out there in the spring and you will find that that strip will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 10 degrees warmer wow. than conventional till even no till or specifically no till because the, the ground just can't warm up but um, so what we found is is the, the, the tilth of that soil is just dynamically different than anything we've ever seen. Wow. Um, to the point where you could take a handful of that, go out there in that strip, scoop down and, and scoop it up, mm -hmm. and you get a whole handful of soil. Wow. And I've never touched it. Okay. Um, the mellow soil is just an ideal, perfect seed bed for what we have looked for for a long time. And what it does is now we have the uh, uh, precision system on our planter and when we run that system, you can actually see that our row units are actually lifting. Wow. To maintain the proper seed depth. Okay. So that tells you right there that that strip is of ideal planting conditions. That is awesome. Roger, what advice do you have for somebody looking in a strip till or wanting to try it for the first time? Um, it's an investment if you really want to get into it because you got to change your your mindset, your thought process, because truly when you make that strip, you're planting. Mm -hmm. um, because that's where you're going to plant in the spring. Wow. And so that's... you have to think about planting in the fall, Okay. number one. Number two is if you're looking to just try it, you gotta find somebody who uh, does some custom application of that and compare it to what you do now. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only way you learn, that's the only way you see what really goes on and so if if you're wanting to try it I, I think you got to get a hold of somebody that, that um, does does a little bit of custom application and even if you don't put your fertilizer on mm -hmm. try the strip till okay um, because the, the the strip till itself you'll be present pleasantly surprised at what you see in the spring okay well hey Roger I appreciate your time here today sure um, thank you so much Everybody, please uh, like and subscribe if you like what you see. Thanks for joining the furrow. Look forward to seeing you soon for another video. Stay tuned.